Procedure characterization is a process where we examine the skills that we want to teach in finite detail. The goal is to develop the performance metric that characterize optimal and suboptimal performance. Core to the procedure characterization process is the experts or the experienced practitioners. This is individuals that are actually good at the task or the skill that we want to train. We interview those individuals as a group and we get them to identify in detail the sequence that they have to go through to perform the task well. And we also get them to do identification of deviations from optimal performance, which are errors, and critical errors, which are deviations from optimal performance that compromise the safe completion of the procedure. And what we found from all of the research is that proficiency-based progression impacts most on errors and critical errors. Yes, the steps of the procedure or the task have to be performed completely, but it's the, the quality is impacted most by errors and critical errors, you know, deviations from optimal performance. Up until the PROTECT study, procedure characterization was normally done face-to-face -face by the three experts in a room where we'd go through the procedure systematically looking at videos of the task being performed. The PROTECT study, we were in the middle of a COVID pandemic, so we couldn't meet face-to-face. -face. So there was a choice of either doing nothing or trying to do something. Before the PROTECT study, I would have claimed confidently that it was not possible to characterize a procedure remotely using Zoom or Skype or whatever. And what we've learned from the PROTECT study, it is actually possible to characterize a procedure. The problem is it takes longer. It's cognitively more demanding on the individuals that are characterizing the procedure. And there's still some face-to-face -face communication required because it's the subtleties of the communication in the same room that's lost online. And that's one of the processes that I'm not entirely convinced that we've overcome, but we certainly have managed to characterize the skills for the, the PROTECT study. And I think that's a unique aspect of the study. Again, it made absolute sense because I think it's always a very important when you're trying to deal with complex situations to break them down into their component parts because they become, it's like, how do, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you know? And I think it is that principle and that's the principle that was adopted and it, I th it did make sense. Back in May 2019, I was very happy to accept the invitation of Dr. Dorothy Breen in CUH that I be part of a research team whose task would be to agree steps and errors in order to define a benchmark while developing a simulation training course for use by ward and clinical staffs, and that was to take the form of a safety huddle. The proposal was particularly attractive to me because it had the potential to improve patient safety at ward level and was intended to empower frontline staff engaging with the patient at the bedside to speak up and anticipate safety issues and risks to those patients. This was an invitation to be present and active from the very beginning, from design through development, implementation and assessment precisely the kind of engagement, partnership and collaboration considered essential by the WHO Patients for Patient Safety Programme to the co-production of Safer Care. Even the title of the work evoked some excitement for me, PROTECT, an acronym, an acronym which when unpacked describes the safety huddle performance as the effectiveness of an interdisciplinary proficiency-based team simulation program to improve communication and reduce patient harm. And that is the piece which really resonates with me, the reduction of patient harm. The work developed and evolved through several virtual meetings and several iterations of the metrics emerged. It was personally satisfying to see some of my own patient observations and family-focused contributions reflected in the later iterations. The practical application of the huddle made absolute sense to me. 
in that it included consideration of the healthcare status of each individual patient and designated some as watchers, which was a new phrase to me. And those patients whose status warranted a greater level of surveillance and continued awareness of their changing needs. Causing preventable harm to a patient through deed or omission is the nightmare scenario for individual healthcare professionals and healthcare systems. Seeing the huddles in action was sufficient to convince me that risk can be mitigated through the huddle and that the huddle itself can be an effective control measure around such risks. Simulation was also a very effective part of the exercise and having the opportunity to observe practice huddles in action throughout the training process informed the further development of that training and provided invaluable feedback to the huddle team members as they had the opportunity to literally see themselves as others see them. All of which added to their confidence for later recordings of huddles. These recordings were very useful learning opportunities as they highlighted the do's and don'ts of the initiative. The critical nature of human factors and the importance of effective communication in increasing complex situations was not alone highlighted, but simulation in particular provided real life examples as learning tools. In conclusion, I reiterate the collaborative commitment of the Patients for Patient Safety Network, which is best articulated in our London Declaration, which states, in honor of those who've died and those who've been left disabled, our loved ones today, we will strive for excellence so that all people receiving healthcare will be as safe as possible as soon as possible. This is our pledge of partnership and collaboration it is also my personal pledge, which I am glad to have been able to honour through my light touch participation in the Protect Huddle development. Thank you.